Modders are once again coming to the rescue. In this video, I'm going to show you a bunch of content that was cut from Fallout 4. Some of the coolest things that get you excited, but today you're in luck. Because when it comes to these specific removed features, modders have actually added them back in. Despite the fact that Bethesda either ran out of time, money, or just plain old didn't like many of these, modders are now restoring several of these features for us totally for free. And with some of these cut content mods, they only just came out a few months ago, so you may have missed them. But there's also one mod in this video I can almost guarantee you've never heard of. Yes, you, James, trust me, you've never downloaded this one. But there is the struggle. We still have a month and a half into until that big Starfield reveal. Although I do have some good news, because you can actually jump into space today, thanks to today's video sponsor, Star Trek Fleet Command. Star Trek Fleet Command is not only totally free to play, but also a full-scale open-world MMO where you can build up your starbase as you gather resources, deploy fleets of ships to battle others, and even recruit many of the most iconic officers from Star Trek overall to crew and lead your ships. And Star Trek Fleet Command actually has a pretty cool mechanic with exploring the galaxy. You'll be taken to strange new world as you attempt to expand your territory and take on other players. You're gonna have to rely either on heavy resource gathering or even just full-on battles and combat to keep yourself prepared and upgrades ready. But thankfully, you don't have to do this alone, and just recently added was the Seven of Nine. This is a brand new fleet commander with her own unique buffs, and Seven has traveled the galaxy, helping those bullied or hurt, and she is particularly complex as a Borg version of herself still exists in her mind. And while that sounds interesting to you, you're in luck. Star Trek Fleet Command is available for free on iOS, Android, and Windows, and you can download right now using my link below or by scanning the QR code and join the fight. But one of the first major areas of cut content in Fallout 4 that probably isn't going to surprise many of you is the Institute, as this faction probably has the most cut content from Fallout 4, but thankfully also a lot of cut content restored thanks to mods. One of the most iconic pieces is the Institute Power Armor, seen prominently in the Fallout 4 art book. An almost exact version of this power armor from the art book has been recreated by modders. And this mod even got so popular that other modders have even taken to improving the mod with further mods, which is just crazy, modception. The Institute Power Armor has this unique helmetless design with the torso really encapsulating the entire top half of the armor. But contrary to what I said in the intro, I bet most of you have seen this mod. Like I mentioned, it is a ridiculously popular Power Armor mod. But thankfully, that isn't the only take on an Institute Power Armor, as the recently released Synth Power Armor also tackles this, with some creative liberties taken compared to the concept art. So you can get a variant that has that full-on torso-helmet combo, being very similar to what we see in the concept art, but also just a more familiar and typical synth variant of the power armor that looks similar to many of the other power armors in the Commonwealth. One of the pretty unique aspects of this mod is it's really meant to be a power armor that you're going to grow with and upgrade. There's going to be a ton of specific upgrade options with unique benefits that will change the appearance also. You can get things that will maximize your carry weight or even just the best resistances against energy weapons, depending on which faction you side with and are facing against. And in beyond all of that, there are several unique variants scattered around that you can find and have very specific and very handy bonuses. Overall, it's a great looking power armor that certainly seems to have at least some inspiration from that cut content, but it's also one that's very comfortable going down its own path with unique options. But in beyond that, Bethesda also had plans to make the faction itself a bit more interesting, such as the Institute using these epic looking bioweapons. In the art book, it's described how these bioweapons would be particularly effective against living targets targets, and really those with high HP, like super mutants, and these would deal damage over time via syringes. Thankfully, this has been added back in as well with the mod Courser Crusher. This is going to be a near-perfect recreation of the bio rifle, but also some Institute Courser enhancements in general. So on one hand, some of that cut functionality of the Coursers has been returned, they're going to be more powerful opponents overall, you'll be able to see them teleporting around you, or even using specific Institute upgrades to boost their performance and capabilities against you. But of course, the Coursers will also be paired with the epic new bio rifle that you're able to loot off of them and use for yourself if you're interested. This thing is a ton of fun, it uses a variety of different types of Institute developed syringes to inflict all types of damage. You're going to visibly be firing tiny syringes at enemies, and some of these will explode after a short duration. And there's even an ammo switcher built into this mod, so you can experiment with all of the new ammo types on the fly, and overall it's just a fun way to flesh out the toughest foes at the Institute. Although unfortunately, this really cool looking hand functionality has never been added in.
win via Bethesda or a mod. I would argue one of the weakest points about the Institute as a whole are their weaponry. It's honestly pretty boring in vanilla Fallout 4, but thankfully we just recently got a new overhaul mod that pretty much just fixes the entire weapon catalog of the Institute with just one download. So this isn't inherently a cut content mod, it's not like there's one image I could point to and like, yeah, that was cut and this is adding that back in, but it seems like on the front of weapons, Bethesda cut a lot of different things. So it seems safe to assume that at least some Institute weapons were cut, considering they really only have one, and the Institute technology overhaul will help fix that. It's going to add in an absolutely insane 30 new weapons for the Institute. This is a comprehensive overhaul, where now all over Fallout 4, this faction will be using new and unique things. And there is almost this cool dichotomy on these new Institute weapons, as many are going to feel very familiar, basically an Institute take on familiar weapons in Fallout 4, while some other ones are almost the Institute going away with their science endeavors and creating something a bit more custom and unique. Pretty much all of the weapons fit perfectly with the Institute styling, and these weapons are going to occupy almost all of the major weapon categories in Fallout 4. And of course, other synths will spawn with these weapons, so you'll just naturally start to find them in the world, but that's where this mod's unique and pretty interesting mechanic comes in, as the monitor decided to make it so these weapons are going to be biocoded to the Institute by default. You're not just going to be able to loot them from enemy synth bodies, and instead you're going to have some options of either joining the Institute to gain access to this new armory, or you're going to to find alternative means and partner with other factions to be able to use them. And there's even some jury-rigged Institute weapons implemented with this mod that you can get before you do all of that. A really cool mod overall, but what I think is probably one of the most interesting pieces of cut content around the Institute actually has a lot more to do with you as the protagonist and player character. The replacement was originally a quest that would start after the Battle of Bunker Hill, where seemingly your spouse would actually come and find you. Now, based off the fact that this is named as an Institute quest and, you know, Fallout 4 being what it is with your spouse, it is heavily implied that the spouse that comes and find you would be a synth recreation of your wife or husband. So at some point in the game, you're just going to be adventuring in Fallout 4 and stumble upon some institute trickery. Thankfully, the mod Synthetic Love will actually bring this back in a pretty cool way. Now, when you arrive at Diamond City, you may be shocked to find Nora is also hanging out there. Your once thought to be deceased wife is now alive and in human form. Except no, because obviously they're a synth. This mod will have a short quest associated with it, where you're basically discussing things with your synth wife and really just describing to them how they are a synth and the real version is deceased. It actually does a really good job at repurposing some of the old Fallout 4 voice lines so the synth Nora is able to talk to you properly. The quest itself is pretty short, although still being pretty interesting, and overall it's actually a pretty simple companion mod. In the end, you're just left with synth Nora as a full-fledged companion, but at the same time, I feel like this is one of those hugely impactful story moments. Being able to stumble upon your wife, like Bethesda at some point anticipated and wanted you to be able to do in Fallout 4, is pretty cool. It really takes you back as you interact with them, and you just immediately and by default have a a greater connection to this character, even though you really barely get to interact with them. But then, how about a cut content mod that you have almost certainly never heard of? Freefall 4 is a massive mod that will take an almost scattershot approach to restoring cut and unused content in Fallout 4, while also fixing a bunch of bugs. This mod's going to make thousands of changes to the game. There's a literal 24-page document laying out everything it does. But the reason you've probably never heard of this mod, even though it is easily one of the coolest cut content content mods out there right now is it was actually originally created for PlayStation 4 users. And as of right now, it's a fully functional PS4 mod you could download on Bethesda.net. But thankfully, there's also an unlisted version that you can get for PC. So on one hand, this is going to restore a bunch of cut weapon mods that are still in the files of the game. And several of these actually have a pretty big impact on their weapons. You can make things like a broadsider that fires cannonballs that will explode instantly on contact making it not only more fun to use, but also very powerful as you get very lucrative splash damage. You can get a scattershot shotgun-like attachment for the Gamma Gun, making it so it'll fire multiple projectiles at once, giving it a significantly worse range, but increasing its damage significantly per shot. You can increase the damage of your Shish Kebab with a new Quad Flame mod instead of the typical Dual Flame mod, or even just make your Baseball Bat orange, because this was a previously cut color for a Baseball Bat modification. A variety of items 
freedoms in the Commonwealth are going to be restored. Maxon's cape is re-implemented into the game and can now be found at the end of his bed. Kate will now have her cut bandolier apparel item that typically she would be wearing, but it makes her definitely stand out far more as a companion. This mod will restore the cut functionality of you being able to wear your dog's collar as a bracelet. It's a really nice touch, especially if you don't use the dog companion, but it basically will just make dog collars an apparel item that is functional. This mod will restore some of the cut areas within familiar locations. So it'll open up both the combat zone as well as the Museum of Freedom, which if you didn't know, there are entire sections of those two interior locations that actually are completely cut and boarded up in the real game. And some of the cut dialogue from companions is in restored, so they'll actually say new things as you walk throughout these. I used to love entering the ring and hearing everyone cheer. Now I'm realizing I was just a caged animal put on display for their amusement. Why bother with that? You open in a museum or something? It restores some fun things also. Super Mutants at the Coast Guard Pier will now actually wear Coast Guard hats, which is a cut feature from the game. Or the Super Mutants at West Roxbury Station will have some custom dialogue as you take them on now. And Bethesda even cut out some of their famous environmental storytelling. There was originally a plaque at Bunker Hill, very similar to how there is in real life, as well as there are several cut terminals around Sanctuary that would actually give you some backstory on the characters living there, and even some insight into Nora's legal profession and what kind of cases she was working on. And the mod will restore cut features for the Fallout 4 DLCs as well. You're now able to find trappers wearing the cut trapper helmets, and of course, you can get it for yourself. So now, of course, I'm only showing you a small chunk of the insane number of changes this mod will bring to the table. Like I said, there's 24 pages of changes here, some of which are just bug fixes, almost acting like an unofficial patch add-on, but also restoring a ton of cut or not used content in Fallout 4. But honestly, that's still far from everything. In 2022, one of the most iconic pieces of of cut content was finally added into Fallout 4, that was Vault 120. This is also known as the 20 Leagues Under the Sea Vault and Quest. Have you ever noticed how in Fallout 4 there is just a ton of barely utilized underwater areas? Well, at one point, Bethesda did have plans to take advantage of at least some of these areas. This was going to be done with Vault 120, a new underwater vault that would be here along with the 20 Leagues Under the Sea quest. This would be tied to the vault and actually also involve this giant squid, which we honestly don't know a whole ton more about. The way this would work is after you completed the quest here, there'd be monsters, aka the submarine mission. You would actually get into the submarine with the captain and be able to sail it over to the new vault, but then you'd accidentally crash into the vault, kicking off the quest. But after years of this being one of the most popular pieces of cut content from Fallout 4, modders have added Vault 120 back in as a fully explorable and functional vault slash player home. This place is massive, with some stunning sights of the underwater regions of Fallout 4, and you're just going to have an absurd amount of space and even some underwater city-esque components, making it one of the most interesting and unique player home mods available right now. Unfortunately, there isn't a mod that fully re-implements the quest line or makes it a functional vault with other people living in it, but with the way Fallout 4 mods have been trending, I do have at least some hope that that could come one day. But to go along with this new seafaring adventure, it seems like Bethesda also had plans for a harpoon gun. No, actually not that harpoon gun, this one. In the original files of Fallout 4, before Far Harbor, this more crudely designed harpoon gun was found, and it was marked as cut content. It seems like Bethesda liked the idea of a harpoon gun enough to actually add a fully-fledged and implemented one with Far Harbor, but but the new version was definitely quite a bit different than the cut version that was associated with the Vault 120 questline. Thankfully, modders have somewhat addressed this also, as we do have the Skewer Launcher. This is going to be far more similar to the original cut harpoon gun, but honestly, I just prefer the design of this one. It's pretty fun to use in Far Harbor, it shoots harpoons, as you would expect, and all around is a great mod. But Fallout 4 also has hammers, as you can see. You probably knew that already, but what you may have not known is one of these hammers is actually cut content. So yeah, Fallout 4 has always had hammers as junk items, but at one point it seems like Bethesda also intended to have a hammer as a basic melee weapon. And with what is probably the simplest cut content mod I show you in this video, modders have also added in the hammer back as a weapon. And like, yeah, that's the entire mod. You could basically use a hammer as a weapon if you want to. But to end things off, we also do have a very 
special piece of DLC cut content with Lucky's Rabbit Foot. This is actually a pretty funny one, and it was meant to be a part of the Nuka World DLC. It seems like it would have been found on the body of Lucky. This is some poor wastelander who did not successfully make it through the Nuka World gauntlet, but it seems like at some point he was intended to have a rabbit foot on his body. Now, thankfully, this has been restored at least somewhat thanks to a mod, where now you're actually able to find Lucky's rabbit foot in Vault 111 on a shelf. I'm not really sure why this mod author decided to put it on a shelf in Vault 111 as opposed to on Lucky's body, but hey, at least the cut content is restored. And this is a pretty funny item. Basically, it's a grenade you're able to equip and throw, and it's going to deal one damage, although you can pick up the rabbit foot after. And the real benefit of the rabbit foot is not in its terminal throwing velocity, but instead, as you have this equipped as a grenade, it's actually going to increase your luck by three and increase experience gained by 10%. So as long as you're willing to give up your grenade slot, you can actually get some pretty positive buffs to your character. So let's look at some of the cut content mods for Fallout 4, some of which are very new, some of which are actually fairly old. If you guys want to see more of this, let me know in the comments down below. I had a bunch of other mods that I couldn't fit in this video that I definitely would like to cover. But if you are interested in turning your Fallout 4 into a proper 2023 game with modern features, check out this video.